In this video, I'll show you how you can send data from here to here. Hi, I'm Zazi. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how you can set up communications with a ESP8266 to online database called Superbase. And then we'll create a Streamlit app to use as a dashboard. So we can log the data from any sensor that we want. Superbase is an online database similar to Firebase and it's open source. Uses Postgre under the hood and has a free tier that offers 500 megabytes of space, which is plenty for this project. In practical terms, it's like having a CSV file online, and it's very easy to connect to a ESP8266. To start, create an account on Superbase website and then click on New Project. Choose a name for your project. I'm just going to call this one Sensors Database and here I'm just going to generate a password and then I'll choose a server location closest to my actual location. Next, we can click on create the project. It takes a few minutes for the project to be created, so while we wait, take note of the API key and the API URL because they will be important later. Once the project is ready, we can click on the database icon. And then on create new table. I'm going to call this main table and I'll leave these options here blank and down here we have the columns of the table. It starts by default with two columns, ID and create a debt and this will be filled automatically when we add new rows. I'm also going to add a column for each measurement that we want to take and I'm going to use a temperature and humidity sensor that uses float values, so I'm going to specify that here. The third sensor is a moisture sensor that uses int values, so I'm also going to specify that. Now we can hit save and the table will be created. We can access the table here on the table editor and add new rows this way, but what we really want is to send the rows from the ESP, and that's what we're going to do next. Before going into the ESP Arduino code, I want to show you how the hardware was set up. For this project, we will use a DHT11 temperature sensor and a capacitive moisture sensor. They were connected to the ESP like so. The DHT11 is connected to pin D1, which is GPIO5, and the capacitive sensor was connected to analog 0. I'll have affiliate links to all of this hardware in the description. And this is the Arduino code that will send the data to Superbase. First, I'm going to import Adafruit's DHT library to read the DHT sensor. I'm going to save in these variables the Wi-Fi credentials and here we're going to put the API key and API URL that we copied earlier and the name of the table we created. And to save the sending interval in seconds, I'm going to use this variable here. Down here you see that I'm using a Wi-Fi client secure object because Superbase requires a HTTPS connection. But for the sake of simplicity and because I'm not worried that anyone will try to steal this data, I'm not actually going to check any certificates. So I set the client object to insecure here. In this portion of the code, we'll try to connect to the Wi-Fi using the credentials. And in the loop portion, if we have an internet connection, 
will read the sensor data and send a POST request to the database. During this process, we'll turn on the ESP built-in LED to indicate that we are sending the message. After all that, we'll wait the sending interval and repeat. And that's it for the Arduino code. Now we can flash the ESP and wait for it to send a message. If everything works correctly, it will give a 201 HTTP code and show the server response here on the serial terminal. And if we check the Superbase website, we can see that our table received a new rule. Now that we have a database with actual data, we can read it using a Streamlit app. Streamlit is a Python-based framework for creating web applications that can create amazing dashboards with very little effort. On the Python side, instead of using the REST API, we are going to use the Python SDK. To install the Superbase SDK, you can run pip install Superbase. I'll show you how the SDK works on this Python notebook. First, we create a Superbase object and we pass to it the API key and API URL. To get all of the data from a table, we use this method and specify the table we want to access here. You can check out how to make more complex queries on the Superbase documentation. And if we run this, we get a list of all of the rows in our table. It's very simple like that. But before we can use this data on a Streamlit app, we need to transform it to a pandas data frame. So here I'm creating an empty data frame and looping through all of this list. And at each iteration, I'm going to append a new row to the data frame. I'm also creating a new column with a nicer date format instead of using the created at column. And there we have it. This is the data frame that we can use on the Streamlit app. Now I'll copy this code to a .py file and use Streamlit to create a dashboard. If you don't have Streamlit yet, you can install it using pip style streamlit. On the .py file, I'm gonna start with the same code we saw before. And we are going to call a few functions to display what we want vertically on the page. Streamlit shows each element in the page by the order they are called. And it accepts markdown. So I'm going to use it here to create a title and under that, we are going to display a plotly chart. I'm going to do this to each measurement column that we have in the database. And then we'll have a vertical dashboard with three charts. After saving this file, open a terminal and then type streamlit run and then the path to the .py file. Streamlit will give you a local address where you can access the dashboard from browser. I won't get into it here, but there are ways of posting this Streamlit app on the internet. And here is the dashboard. Once everything's running, you can power the microcontroller from a phone charger, like I did here. It will keep sending data to the database indefinitely. And that's it. All of the code shown here will be available on GitHub. Links in the description. Thanks for watching.